I think the, the words of Ernest Rutherford are just wonderful. He said, we've run out of money, now it's time to start thinking. And the common ground comes from the way that economists think about pollution problems in general, which is that the way to get less pollution is to make polluting expensive. Because right? when you make polluting expensive, you get market forces working to promote conservation and innovation and the development of new technologies and all the things that I at least love about capitalism. But I'm here to make a case for efficiency as a true grid level resource on par with that of coal and oil. And I think efficiency, if we go out, if we go after it with the tenacity and the business drive we've gone after coal and oil, has a huge potential. It's all about closing loops, taking the output of one process and making it the input of another process. That's the key to it. So this is not just a farm. This is a farm and X, a farm and manufacturing, a farm and office, a farm and residential. Something that can take the waste heat from lighting and the waste carbon dioxide from other processes, feed it to the plants, take the oxygen, send it to the offices, take the grains from brewing. Don't let nature in. This is actually an Anglo-Saxon Victorian principle, and I want to infest the city with nature. This is the highest green roof in the United Kingdom. When I put this up for bugs, they said to me, how are the bees going to get there dusty? <laughs> That's what they said to me. How are the bees going to get there? Once we get into a city, we kind of go, hmm, need to lift the bees, take the bees in the lift, up the lift, hmm, yeah, OK. They bloody fly, yeah. <laughs> this is garlic mustard, very invasive on the East Coast. It puts out toxins that can kill soil fungi. So incredibly damaging pests. What can we do about that? Well, we can harvest it and make it into pesto. So we're taking those biological principles. How does a spider create silk? We're not going to farm the spider. We're not going to just create the silk and hope we get it right. We're going to look at the biological principles and from that we extract design principles that we can hand to an architect, to a product designer, to a business organizer, to a chemist to emulate life.